This is Jay from 10,000 I'm speaking to. Yeah. How long have you guys actually been together? Two and a half years. All right. And you've released only one EP so far and that was last year. Yeah, we just released the EP. That was mid-2011. We released Tales from the Wasteland and then sort of, you know, a bit of advice from a few people. They told us to... Uh, be best if we sort of release singles and see how that goes rather than a sort of EP or an album. So we tried that and that's sort of where we're at at the moment. But yeah, we were just discussing last night when we're going to do our next recording of an album and it will be coming up in the next couple of months. All right, that was my next question. <laughs> oh, cool, yeah. You do so, say that you've got a heap of new singles lined up. Yeah, we've just released one a couple of weeks ago that was in time for Christmas. That's called When I Get You, yeah. and um, we le- released a clip as well right before Christmas, and it's already got 2,000 likes on YouTube in, in two weeks, which isn't too bad. Well, it's a fun video. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun making it. We enjoy the video side of it as well, you know. It's it's great sort of recording and writing the songs and coming up with all of that, but, you know, you've, you, you've got to be able to provide visuals these days for your releases and you know we all love movies in the band as well so it's great sort of brainstorming coming up with ideas for videos and, and then trying to sort of power it back to make it you know rely on our resources rather than spending big budgets on clips how to sort of pull off your ideas in a, in a clever way that's not going to break the bank you know yeah yeah so we, we, we love the clip that was just released a couple of weeks ago well, I'll ask one question to get out of the way. Huh? In your photographs, there's two guys that look exactly the same. Are they twins? Yeah, that's funny. Funny, we've been laughing about that actually because I mean, if you know the guys, that's, that's Marty and Brando, and they're the two guitarists, and they they could not be more different in character, you know. And it's it's funny. I I think it's. I just think it's like as you keep hanging out with each other, you just you sort of adopt each other's mannerisms and, you know, to a certain extent, the, the way that you look, you know, the way that you style yourself and everything. You know, as you become more and more a band, I guess, you, you, you just sort of take tips from each other, I guess. So they're not related at all? No, they're not at all. They're not at all. And, yeah, they're not brothers, twins, cousins, anything. They're just, yeah, just mates. But it's, it's so funny. I mean, if you, if you knew the two guys, they, they couldn't be more different. But, yeah, we've, we've, um, we've gotten a lot of questions about those guys being twins. It's like, oh, you've got, you got twins in the band. It's like, no. <laughs> oh, maybe you should start saying you have. Yeah, I think so. It would be a good sort of marketing point, I guess. Yeah. If you've been together two and a half years, can I ask what you were doing before that? Were you in other bands or...? Yeah, I personally was in one other band that was, I guess you'd say, serious. That was a few years ago now, and that was great. I had a lot of fun with that as well. One of, the, I guess, my partner in that, in terms of the administration, became very sick, so we had to sort of follow that project, and it was literally as I was sort of putting down the microphone for a, a little while that Marty and Brandon... The, the two guitarists got in touch with me and we were just we were actually just going to start writing, you know, just start jamming. It's always a good idea if you're sort of in between bands to, you know, keep your practice going, keep your craft going and everything. And, and that's where we were at, you know, but it literally was, we walked into the room, the three of us, and you could tell something was there, you know, you could tell there was something more long term there than, than just a writing or jamming project. And from there, we found a drummer and it took us a little while to find a bassist, get, get, the, get the right mix of the five people happening. Now, you know, it's absolutely the right mix of people and we love each other's company and the, the creative flow is very productive. Yeah, and I think maybe one of the most difficult things to do, but it seems to be a growing trend, is that your drummer does the backing vocals. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why that is in particular. I just think essentially we're a guitar band if you know what I mean it's sort of a lot of our songs are based around what the guitars are doing and essentially there's there's two lead guitarists you know they they swap jobs it's not traditionally a rhythm guitarist and a lead guitarist they, they kind of swap and the guitar sounds sort of twirl around each other and so their job is very full you know so that I guess leaves the, the rhythm section to do backing vocals for us first of all it was Mike our drummer and now it's Jason, and, and Jason's a great singer. But, you know, as, as time goes by and the boys get more and more confident with their vocals, we're all singers now, you know, the five of us. So 
we all we all share vocals in different parts depending on what we're doing sort of instrumentally. And you recently did the Basement Apes live. Yeah, we did. That was awesome. That was with Electric Dynamite, which we're playing with again at Bang. And yeah, that was that was sort of quite a last minute request that we come and do that and we had a great time. That's gonna be I mean it is now, but it's it's gonna grow and grow that show. You can tell it's got a really good edgy vibe to it. It really seems quite underground, you know, it's not too polished, it's not too grungy. Um, we got a great response from that. We had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I was actually at episode three with Massive and Emperor. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I think they were the ones right before us, maybe. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you're Super playing with Emperor well. on Saturday the 12th of January? Yes, at um, the Corner Hotel, part of a festival called Collision at the Corner. And that'll be the first time playing at the Corner Hotel for us. We're pretty excited about it. We've played with Emperor before. They're a great band. We supported Emperor probably at our fourth or fifth gig at Ding Dong a few years ago. And they returned the favour by supporting us at our single launch about a month and a half ago. So they're great guys, really talented bands. There's quite a few bands playing at that, The Deep End, Bug Dust, King of the North, Riot and Toy Town. Really good mix of, you know, what's happening in Melbourne at the moment. Sulphur Hyde, who who are promoting that, are doing some great festivals. They're, They're really supportive of up and coming Melbourne bands and they offer a lot of opportunities. They're, you know, responsible for Rock the Bay and Creep Show and other festivals and they're they're branching out to I think we're joining them in, in Brisbane as well at uh it's called Rock the Valley, another festival up there. Yeah, and are you willing to go on the record with which of the bands playing at the corner that you want to see the most? I don't know, I love Bug Dust. They've got such a sense of danger. We've we supported them once before and I think we were right before them as they were coming off stage and they, there was <laughs> such a such a raw sense of danger about them. I can't wait to see them again. But also the Deep End, they're a fantastic band. They're another band that I guess we started out with as well years ago. We were on a bill both supporting a, a larger act. It's great to see that those guys have really made steps as well and are still really rocking. They, they, they released a single in a clip not long ago and it looks like they're doing great things as well. So, yeah, the deep, probably the deep end and Bug Dust, I'd have to say. Yeah, I, I was actually surprised to know Bug Dust are still together. I'd love to see yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I love to see bands that have a bit of longevity, you know, a bit of history. Yeah. Fantastic. So you spent the last winter writing your new songs and that. and Yeah. Doing a bit of recording down at Birdland for the singles, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So with the writing process, is it still mainly you, Jace, uh, you, Brandon and Marty that are involved in the writing process or are you all involved now? We're all involved now, I guess. Jason, our drummer, is still sort of finding his way in. He is very much so in the performing of it. He's great for sort of making a lot of offers in the rehearsal room. He's but Luke's a fantastic writer as well. I guess initially when we when we started, a lot of it was coming from Marty and Brando and I, but it's it happens now in different combinations and it doesn't seem to matter where it comes from anymore. We we just have you know, we're able to read our read each other's minds a little bit more and you can kind of suss out what somebody is trying to achieve with one of their ideas pretty quickly these days. I've come to believe that, like, it's really difficult to be in a relationship these days, but being in a band, you're having, like, multiple relationships. Yeah. Do you feel like you've got something magic with your current lineup? Oh, yeah, totally. It's right now, it's, and more than ever before, oh, we, you know, we love hanging out with each other. And it's weird because, obviously, sort of music is at the centre of it at the end of the day, but... You, you've got to love each other's company, you know. You've, you've, you've got to kind of have fun being around each other and hanging out with each other. And it's amazing how much, how many good ideas come out of just literally talking crap, you know. Like, you've, you've got to have time to just hang with your mates and, and talk a whole lot of crap and, and just see what comes out of that. I think you need to get a lot of that out of the way by the time that you, you come in to rehearse as well so you can really knuckle down and work. So, yeah, it's a really healthy, social, productive atmosphere within the band at the moment. More than more than ever before, there's hardly any tension in the room at any one time. You've always got to have a little bit of a creative rub, but, you know, there's no sort of tension in the band anymore. It's just a whole lot of fun at the moment. Well, that's good. It's going yeah. to be a good year for you then. 
Yeah, you can. Uh, it's, it's funny because you can you can actually hear it in our music. I think I think you can hear sort of an, an ease between us. Like there's a there's a lot more flow in our songs. You can tell that they've come together quite easily. You know, there, there hasn't been too much discussion, or they've just kind of flowed flowed out of it a little bit more. I, I, I definitely think you can hear it. Well, can I ask you where the name Ten Thousand came from? We stupid i mean you have so many discussions about band names and everything when you when we are starting out you, you literally have hundreds and we we're talking about this the other night who actually came up with it and how we came up with it and there are a few different theories you know over time a, a, few, a few different theories of form but we can't actually remember i know that sounds boring and ridiculous but we can't actually rem- remember who came up with it or why i think 10,000 was like a hundred years ago or so, like in olden times, ten thousand was the biggest number conceivable. You know, like these days we we talk in millions or billions, but hundreds of years ago it was always ten thousand. You know, that was the biggest army you could have was ten thousand men, and it was the biggest number conceivable for people. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it was that. I think it was that in particular. It was like the biggest number conceivable or something. So we should give out your website addresses. Yeah, absolutely. 10,000official.com. Yeah, 10,000 official. And that's all in words, not in numbers. Yes, that's right. And on Facebook, you're 10,000 music. 10,000 music, yeah. You've got your own YouTube channel too. Yeah, I think that's under 10,000 official as well. No, that's 10,000 music. Oh, there we go, 10,000 music. <laughs> you've, you've, Obviously, I don't take care of the YouTube. Yeah, you've got iTunes, but do you actually have anything on iTunes at this point? Yeah, we do. We've got the EP on there. We've got a couple of remixes and a couple of singles as well, so a fair bit of material there to have a listen to. Yeah. We're on Spotify as well. Cool. And going back to your YouTube, 10,000 Music, people can see your new single for When I Get You. That's right. On that. And it is a really good video, so people should have a look at that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And a group of good-looking young guys too. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And you're playing at the Corner Hotel at Collision at the Corner on Saturday the 12th of January. Yes, we are. Really excited about that. Very exciting. And at the moment you don't have any other shows lined up. Oh, we do. We've got a show the following Saturday uh, that's in Sydney. We've got a few shows in February, mostly to do with O Week at the different unis. All right. But we're filming another clip at the beginning of February as well, so leaving a little gap there between gigs so we can get some other stuff done. Yeah. So you'll have a new single coming out in February? Probably March it'll be released. A little bit of time to do some editing and and then it'll be released in March. Well, people can check out your Facebook or your website, I guess, to get those gigs again that's 10,000official.com and thank you very much for talking to me today no worries a lot of fun thank you I look forward to hearing more from you in the future and to hearing that album when you get around to it this year yeah great you shouldn't be too far away we're uh, going to take some time off to do some more writing and we've already got a, a big slew of new songs which will be trialling and testing at the next couple of gigs but yeah not too far away we'll have an album for everybody Yeah, and thank you very much for talking to me today. No worries, a lot of fun, thank you. I look forward to hearing more from you in the future and to hearing that album when you get around to it this year. Yeah, great, you shouldn't be too far away. We're going to take some time off to do some more writing and we've already got a a big slew of new songs which we'll be trialling and testing at the next couple of gigs, but yeah, not too far away, we'll have an album for everybody. Oh, great. All right, and, no worries. Yeah, I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Yeah, good on you. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.